Approving the minutes from May 9th, 2013. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And motion carries. Number four, discussion and possible action on Class B combination fermented malt beverage license for neighbors, legends at Merrill Hills and Challenger's restaurant. And is there a reason we shouldn't take these all together? Second. I'll second. All three. All three. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Number B, the 2013 and 20, 2014 cigarette tobacco license for the legend at Merrill Hills. Make a motion. Go second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And C, operator's license for Challenger's restaurants. Uh, <clears throat> these are? They were added. So that's why okay. There is no reason not to Okay. Um, and all three together. I'll make a motion to approve all three. Second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And on to D, fireworks permit for the legend at Merrill Hills for July 4th being conducted by Bartolotta. Just for clarification, all items, sorry. All items for the July 4th that there have been met payment insurance is shown on file. Fire chief has gone out to the site and everything, so has reviewed everything. So everything is okay. I'll make a motion move. Second. I'll second. Motion. Yes. To Dan. Dan, do you take a truck out there for the fireworks display? Yes. Up in Yes, we do. And that's just protocol every year. By state law, too. Oh, okay. Thank you. That was my discussion. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? F. Third request to waive Town of Waukesha Rescue oh, Bill. Yes, one. Echo. Yeah. Echo. No. C. E. Looks like a C if I don't wear glasses. Tax collection with uh, the agreement with town, uh, Waukesha County has not changed. It is the same as it has been. I don't think the pricing has changed on that for how long? For a long time. A long time. Um, and Jamie claims it would be unlikely she could do it cheaper. Make a motion to approve. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And motion carries now on to F, third request to waive the town of Waukesha rescue bills. And my position would remain the same that I don't think I want to be starting a precedent that we waive, and I don't think we want to be waiving any bills, whether it's a Ambulance, hospital, taxes um, that have been duly charged. Well, my personal feel is that uh, the hospital determines. Yeah, 
the hospital determines um, the financial ability for these residents to be able to pay those bills. Uh, you know, I would support waiving, not waiving, but a reduction in this case based on the approval letters of Waukesha Memorial. 90% uh, on the first bill will be covered, 80% on the second invoice. There's, there's three invoices total. With the second group. The, the two of them are under 80% and one is under 90%, just for clarification. So I'd make a motion to, to <coughs> whatever you want to word it, write off. It would be a reduction. Reduce. Um, in the amount of $504.83, the um, person responsible would still have $101.22. Question. Are these repeat individuals that you know of, Gene? In other words, have they had the same situation come before the town? It, it would prior. be the same billings for the, the people in question. Same individuals repeatedly? Right, otherwise it'd be listed separately. It's, it's, but it's three different bills, bills, correct? No. It's three different bills, one from 12 8 of 12, one from 12 12, and one from 1 18 of 13. Right, but I read somewhere that it was the third try. So it's, have they done it previous to this? these three tries? They have tried each time, um, but they were, did not have the paperwork because the board had approved a waivement of a billing. It stated 100% with the, that documentation that's now in front of you. They had submitted without that prior to, and, you, and the board has denied it each the last two times without that paperwork. The, the third time, Larry, is that we have looked at it three times. Right, but, but have they done this in the past, I guess. 12, 8, 12, no, 12. No, not with these invoices, with different invoices, uh, with, from different uh, transports that we know of. No, I, I'm not aware of us ever waiving bills until last year. So. Oh, okay, okay. We have a motion, is there a second? I'll second. Five hundred and four dollars, you said, James. In eighty-three cents. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, I guess one question when it says that they're uh, to ninety percent, so they're paying ten percent of their bill, is yeah. correct? Okay, and twenty percent of the other two. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion carries. Update on the status of the Town of Waukesha on-site sewage disposal system and water supply. Last week, Wednesday, we met, or Friday, we met with uh, Mr. Paul Day and uh, Chris, one of the people that worked with him in the office, there were uh, those two plus John, Christian Elliott, and myself, and virtually we gained some insight as to how we can proceed with our seeking municipal sewer. And uh, virtually what came out of that meeting is we won't have to be a next to obtain city sewer. Okay. Uh, water, at that point, we had a nice discussion, it took about a half an hour, something like that, 40 minutes, and uh, Mr. Day kind of laid out the groundwork that needs to be done. Mr. Merrick has um, talked to Ed Henshaw from the city, and uh, basically what has to happen we need to have some sort of an agreement in place that's going to be worked on. 
there was going to be a letter sent, and I'll, and uh, John, you can explain that portion. After that, uh, Mr. Day had indicated that uh, we will, they will have an in-house discussion and invite us back to proceed talking about it more. And then the water utility will be part of this program also. So there's a few things that we have to do to get this ball rolling. And John, would you like to tell us about the letter that was going to go out or did go out? Yeah. The city needs to uh, approve along the town hall to hook up to city sewer and water. Um, that is something that's going to be done in the, by the Common Council and is supposed to be on their schedule in the very near future. Uh, it's, it's that simple. Any questions from the board? All right, moving on. Update on uh, Senate Bill 207. Senate Bill 207 was introduced a number of weeks ago. Oh, you missed, did I miss a gate? Hotel. Sorry, guys. I'm going to wear my glasses. Town board to consider uh, taking action on town planner position. Uh, we have a letter of engagement from Yegi Colby and an offer letter from Foth. It's something that we should revisit this. I'm not a planning expert. I ask that the evaluation matrix from when we hired Yankee be included in our packets, although this isn't the makeup of the current board, thought it would be important for the new members of the board to see what was done back when Yagi was selected and to consider whether or not that's something we want to do going forward. And you can see based on the evaluation metrics, both uh, scored equal to Yagi. It was a bit of a toss up as to which way we could go with that. And uh, the back and forth of the board at that time uh, ended up on the coin falling on Yagi. I just question if we're being served, if the residents and the developers here, as well as our staff in our office, are being served. And I'm of mind to say that they're not. I 
I've talked with Steve Circus in General Capital. He was uh, the, the owners of the land uh, where the Dunkin' Donuts existed or what was proposed to go in. Uh, I've talked with uh, the German family. And they feel like they uh, got the run around and got misdirected. It took them several months to get a CSM put together. Uh, it delayed the construction of a new home for Dave and Jessica. You know, we have uh, other CSMs that came in that we raced to meet deadlines on, even having special meetings. I've heard many times in our clerk's office complaints about information coming in timely and the accuracy of that information. I've sat here and listened to Brian point out some of the deficiencies in the work that's submitted. And for my liking, I think we might be served better by going with both. And that's what we're going to What, uh, what additional costs have we incurred? We've currently lost the tax revenue from the Dunkin' Donuts development. Whether they will or do come back and put that back together, um, they don't know if they've got a viable uh, purchaser of the property. Dunkin' Donuts is already looking at identifying other sites General Capital is considering annexing that property in the city because of development issues that happen here. When you talk about what are those threats, I mean, these guys are turning a parking lot into a tax base. Certainly they're making money doing it, good for them, but um, they came in three months in a row. And, and as a developer, you know, that's not a that doesn't make you happy, right? Um, so they're, they're pretty pretty flustered and frustrated with the process that they had here in the town. Um, Jason Fruth, I got to tell you, when I got the letter from Jason Fruth, where we tried to insert that we had village powers and Jason had to enlighten us that, no, we don't, that doesn't apply in this case, it isn't that. It's just like, who's on first base? I mean. I'm not a planning expert. I rely on our planner to be able to provide me thorough, accurate, complete, timely information. And we're not getting that. And we're, we're causing hardship for, and financial hardship for our residents and for developer. Now this particular developer is trying to come back in the door, but he's also saying, hey, you know what, I just might pick this thing up and go right to the city. Do they pick up Vinnie DePaul with it because of the way the parcel is laid out? Um, we could stand to lose a decent amount of tax base and a development that I think would be pretty fair in the town. The village powers comment, where did that come from though? That's not came from Roger's letter. <clears throat> I guess I'd like to, I mean, as long as we're here to discuss this, I'd like to dig. That's one of about four possible things I've got on my list. I guess I would like to dig a little bit deeper into that, even for my involvement. I was not here at the meeting when the Dunkin' Donuts thing was first put on. Um, I think probably the letter from Jason Proof that you're referring to is actually drafted in response to my request, but I would like as well to know, and maybe Roger or somebody can answer that, I'd like to know where this business about exerting village powers came from. That does not sound to me really like planner speak, so I'd like to have the answer to that question as well. Do you want to give us an answer to that? I, and I guess my question specifically for you, was that solely of your own creation or was there discussion 
involvement with others, such as Attorney De La Mora, our former chairwoman, Van Sock? I'd like to know. Um, the question again came out of the um, discussion with uh, the Attorney De La Mora, as well as former chairperson Van Zock. Uh, at a meeting in preparation for the Planning Commission packet for that month. Um, the question was raised um, by, by Hector whether or not we have the right to exercise village powers. Uh, it's, village powers is something that as a planner uh, we abide by, but yet I'm not in a position to wield any authority and refer to Hector's recommendation in this regard. The language in my report came directly from that conversation with Hector and said, so, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, uh, are you based, I mean, so many words, you kind of said he was asking for your legal advice in that manner, or no? I mean, help me out. No, it was the recommendation to include that, that mention of legal powers was directly from Hector as a, as a way to present to the bank mission and the board that the town had the right to take the action that we were about to take. Okay, then I guess, Hector, you're kind of in the barrel. I'd like to hear from you. I'm not in the barrel. As you know, having served on the Planning Commission for a number of years, uh, this town elected to exercise village powers with regards to zoning matters. And in that regard, uh, that means that the town can initiate rezoning uh, action uh, and of course the exercise of that is subject to approval by the county as you have discussed a number of times. Well I guess following up on that and I gotta tell you when I went into my packet and read that I did a holy cow you've got to be kidding me okay I called Dale Shaver and asked him about that he's Jason Fruth's boss basically and he said, you have absolutely no authority in this matter to exercise village powers. That's what precipitated the letter from Jason Fruit. I asked for it. Have you read that letter, Hector? I'm just going to step in because this agenda item is about reviewing these offer letters, who we feel are getting better or could get better served from. And regardless of what the village powers comment was, let me reiterate, the owner of the bistro knew more and had more accurate information than our planner. That's concerning, more concerning than a village powers letter which says certainly we have the ability to go ahead and change zoning and get the county's approval on that. We could have chosen to exercise that, but the night that the planning commission was here and we talked about can we have the drive through or can we not, we made decisions based on representations that Roger gave to us. The uh, developer made those decisions as well and moved forward. And it cost him time, money, and effort. He lost a buyer. And now we may lose the property. Why? Because the owner of the bistro knew they couldn't have a drive-through, and we didn't. Well, I'm going to respectfully but forcefully disagree with you, and this is a subject of discussion because you put it in play about 10 minutes ago. And my concern is basically you are laying the blame at Yeggy Colby's feet and at Roger's feet. And the language in that letter and the recommendation, and I guess I'll put it to you, Hector, denied that, but the suggestion is the source of that came from you about exercising village powers. Is that not true? It is true. <clears throat> and if you will remember the action, uh, uh, Mr. Supervisor, that was taken, it was finalized with the understanding that it was subject to the approval of the county. That was the motion that was passed. I understand, but we rely upon you for legal advice, not a planner, not anybody else. Right. And if you advised us legally that the town was on good footing, good standing, <coughs> to exercise 
village powers in that regard, and unless you're going to refute Dale Shaver and Jason Fruit's denial of that, they said in so many professional words, you're full of beans. That's what they said. I you have very no happy to finish, show you. Yeah, finish, yeah, finish, then you go. They said you have no authority to exercise village powers in that regard. So to the extent that your legal recommendation ended up in Roger's report, and we are dealing with the consequences of that, I think your culpability exceeds his. Well, take a step back and examine what you, uh, as a supervisor, did. You voted to change the zoning for that parcel subject to county approval. That was the advice that I gave you, the board. The term of art that I was using with regards to the planner is a term that is found in the statutes, and if you would give me the opportunity, I'll be happy to meet with you after this meeting and show you how this town has elected to use village zoning powers. I don't, I don't think that it's reasonable for you to never have shared that conversation that you're now alluding to until now and to assert that I'm at fault for what? You were not in any way misled by me. I indicated that it should be passed subject to approval by the county board. That may be, but the recommendation about village powers, did you read the letter from Jason Fruth regarding that? Did you read that, Hector? No, I was never... You've never read the letter from Jason given Fruth? A, I was never given a copy of that letter. Well, why don't we produce it for him right now? You were well, at the was, meeting. Was that written at your behalf, sir? I questioned that of Dale Shaver. Jason Fruth wrote the letter. That was included in the packets. Everybody saw that letter. Yes. You certainly had a copy of that letter. I can't believe otherwise. Well, sir, you never saw that? I am not recalling any such letter. Well, can we produce a copy of that while we're here? So you can take a look at it. Let's do it. Make copies, please, and distribute them. I still don't think it's a pertinent topic. Uh, it's it's absolutely pertinent. When, when do you do you recall when that letter came out? I remember seeing it. I just don't remember the date. Well, what it. was the meeting? And Doug Hofer sat there, recommended that we rescind the prior the prior approval, and this voted vote voted voted board voted against his recommendation, three to two. It was at the um, I believe at the last meeting that they appeared here. Was it not? Can, can you mark in some capacity still get or provide an answer as to how the guy at the beach journal is more? How that means we're being served. Well, Mr. Bransky, if you don't mind, I'd like to address Sharp. Sure. Mr. Rack, you stepped in the microphone that evening. Mm -hmm. I heard him to say, share the information dated 2006. It's in my notes. It's in the correspondence I sent to Jason Fruits directly the day after, and the copy of that correspondence has been provided to you. I was dumbfounded in that 2006. We have nothing that dates from 2006. What he meant, what he should have said was 2004. 2004 is when the, the enrolled ordinances were created. Those enrolled ordinances are not on town file. That information was not available to me in making recommendations. It's only because I asked Jason for to send copies of them after that meeting that the town has them now. Additionally, I'd like to add, Joe, the developer has a requirement of his own due diligence. He needs to determine if he can build what he desires to build there. Um, that's up to him. He needs to do his own research. And if he did or did not find those ordinances that existed in 2004, and perhaps members of the plan commission that existed at that time or even the town board, they should have known about that stuff too. Um, going back to village powers, it's not whether or not the town has village powers. We know that we have village powers. That was enacted and the, the town adopted them many, many years ago, 1943. Decades ago, many years. The question is, did those village powers apply to this situation? And they absolutely did not. We were advised that they did. Well, for my liking, and I'm not 
trying to look, I'm citing some recent examples of the CSM issues that we've run into, the issues with private residences such as the Germans that we've run into, the issue of the Dunkin' Donuts, you know, as the newspaper put it, the Dunkin' Donuts debacle, I think was their headline. Um, you know, they, I don't think I'm speaking too many words of taking liberty with their opinion, but they're more than frustrated with you. And for the town to potentially lose that property in annexation because they believe they've lost their buyer, doesn't bode well. I don't know how to reconcile the comments. This is not one comment, but a series that have come from the girls in the office <coughs> is late and inaccurate. That they're picking up the pieces in that way. Um, that's not, we have a duty to give our town staff quality people to work with give our residents quality to deal with. Um, you know, we had just, I mean, you had mentioned you don't want to waive any bills, but we had Tom Kelnick in here just two weeks ago and wants to waive all your bills because he, he does not have our ballot. Um, you know, I mean, you guys voted not to waive those other bills for the, the piece, but you know, we'll see where we go with that. But we've got multiple people that are upset, and it centers around planning. I, business, private resident, office staff. Brian, you've pointed out half a dozen different times inaccuracies in the work that's provided to you. Um, we've had instances where stuff just isn't in our packet. We had bamboo cults make reference to the uh, mysterious CSM that we didn't have, that we <clears throat> made a motion to deny the one we didn't have. Uh, I mean, those are all real examples of what we've had here in Town Hall over the last six months. And to me, those are examples that say, I think we'd be better served by the public. The CSM issues, many of them that have come up, are a result of timing. The town ordinances say that we have 60 days to approve or deny a CSM. The state statutes say 90 days. The CSM issues that have come up with regards to timing are a reflection on the shortcomings of the previous board for not addressing our ordinance that doesn't match. That's not true. That doesn't match That's the not state true. statute. If you're a town and don't planner, blame that. If you're a town, town planner, planner and you know that the ordinance is 60 days, it is your duty. It's your down job you're getting paid for to get the thing here in a timely fashion for us to consider. <clears throat> it's not that, not that we dropped the ball, John. There was a time date stamp on it. We don't even know that that thing came in. It got stamped. Roger comes by. Tick, tick, tick. And those people were nice enough in some cases to give us extensions. They didn't have to do anything. They just said, hey, geez, look at me. I'm going to get that approved just because you didn't process it in time. I guess I'd make a motion to release Yaggy Colby and award a contract to folks for one year. Previously, the town board went through an extensive vetting process. Started with, what, a dozen or so various firms? You took it upon yourself with no board approval, no authorization to engage FOF with a representation letter. I didn't need I, authorization or did I need your approval? I didn't ask you, I didn't ask for my well, approval. Just, I said just board stated approval. it. I, said I didn't board need approval. the board approval, John, to go ask FOF if they'd be interested. It's not a requirement. You're right. So don't state it in such a way that would make it appear to a watcher or an yeah. audience member yeah. no. that there was some inappropriate action. It's it. absolutely inappropriate. It is you not a direction from the board to go forward I didn't and seek out it. a single, a Did single not need vendor. It. Did not need it. Didn't say you needed it. I said it was inappropriate. 
and they were selected only because, as you've seen here, the extensive search brought us down to two companies. Okay. And there was a great drop off. BK Planning rated the worst by four of five board members. So, should we bring them back in? I don't think so. Civitech, you know, they rated close, but both was a toss up. If it wasn't for a personal item that was brought up during those discussions by a former board member, there was a good chance that both would have been selected. That's why I went back to full. Well, I'd like to get back to the topics at hand, if we could. And I have multiple things that I would like to address, but the first, I guess, to do the house cleaning, Hector, give you the opportunity um, to read through that letter of April 10th. I believe that was Tuesday, April 10th, and I quite believe that was included in the packets and made available for the meeting that following Thursday. Do we have the dates right, Jamie? Did we have a planning commission meeting and town board meeting on Thursday, April 12th, at which time? <laughs> the 11th. Um, no, the, you're correct. As much as I'd like to engage 11th. with you, no, Brian, I'm not, I stuck on the floor. Joe, I has a floor. motion no. on the floor. There's no second. discussion, there's no second. No the chair needs to call for a second. I made we the motion. Can, we can continue the to discuss. Is, the there Is there a second? Is there a second? I knew the motion. I was, I'm thinking I was in the other room. My motion was to release Yagi from service in accordance with their agreement and to extend an offer to both for a period of one year. Is there a second? Second with discussion. Okay, may I continue? Thank you. All right, Hector, have you had an opportunity to read that letter of April 10th, 2013 from Jason, Cruz Planning and Zoning Advancement Administrator for Waukesha County Departments of Parks and Land Use to Jamie Salentine, Waukesha Town Clerk. Did you get a chance to read that? I now have a copy of it. You have, you're, you're asserting to us you have never seen that before. No, I'm telling you that I do not recall reading it. That's what I said before. Were you at the meeting? Well, then I just I don't remember. Were you at the meeting on the 12th, or were you perhaps absent? I don't know. If, if uh, Doug Hofer was here, he may have been instead of myself. Which is a possibility. Uh, I was at the meeting when the action was passed because I recommended to the board that uh, this action would be subject to what would be determined by Waukesha County. That I clearly recall. All right, but do, do, well, let's put it this way then. Whether you've seen this letter or not, do you take exception to what Jason Fruth says that basically says the town of Waukesha has no authority to exercise village <laughs> powers with regards to this matter? That's my translation. Do you accept that, yes or no? No, and I respectfully disagree because he says in his letter um, Section 6062 of the Wisconsin Statutes applies to towns and is entitled Zoning Authority of Exercising Village Powers. Section 6062 sub 3 reads as follows. In counties having a county zoning ordinance, no zoning ordinance or amendment of a zoning ordinance may be adopted under this section unless approved by the county board. <clears throat> Waukesha County has a county zoning ordinance. Henceforth, Waukesha County routinely processes proposed town ordinance amendments through the county approval process accordingly. And that's consistent with what I advised the entire board, including yourself, Mr. Fisher. Well, first of all, I was. But do you not, not remember I was my not, mentioning that? I was not at the meeting on February 14th. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. And I, I, I. That's fine. I I'll accept your apology. Your all right. I'll accept your apology. 
But we, I, I think that Hector, we, we check, <coughs> could, you, could you allow me to finish? Please I do. think that if we were to check the minutes, it would show that. Because everyone who left here, um, among other things, I cross-examined the engineer for the developer at that meeting. And he represented that he routinely handled these kinds of matters. And I asked him as to whether he had checked into these uh, prior restrictions. And my recollection was that he really didn't express any knowledge of that. Uh, but the bottom line, Mr. Fisher, is this. Under any scenario, it still would have required a modification of the previous zoning ordinance that had been passed by this town, which basically did not appear in the town records, and which basically said that at that location there could not be a drive through restaurant, despite the fact that we gave it zoning that it would allow that kind of an operation. I want to make it real simple, Attorney Dale Moore. Look at the third paragraph <laughs> on page one, about midway through the paragraph. I'll read two sentences to you. The town planner's staff report also suggests that the town has the ability to exercise village powers in considering such matters. And I think we've established, even though it's in his report, that is your legal opinion. They say the town's use of village powers does not eliminate the responsibility of the town to enforce the terms of adopted ordinances, nor does it eliminate the need for zoning ordinance amendments approved by the Waukesha County Board. Do you disagree with those two sentences in any way, shape, or form? I think you and I are reading the same thing in different sentences. Basically, let me put it in these simple terms. It's a two-step action. That is, if this town wishes to change any aspect of its zoning ordinances, it first has to go through the Planning Commission, and then upon the recommendation of the Planning Commission uh, being adopted by the board, and assuming there's appropriate publication, then the whole matter goes to the county. You and I sat here at the last meeting when you basically voted to rezone the Five Diamonds property. That was the same identical process. I interpret this language to simply be a statement by the county zoning administrator or planner planning and zoning manager, excuse me, as a reminder that there needs to be an adherence to that two-step process. And until the two-step process is completed, what's on the books controls. So for example, the Five Diamond situation, again, you basically voted to change the zoning, which is very appropriate. You may recall that at that meeting, I also said, please bear in mind that until such time as the county approves it, the conditional use permit continues to control. Do you, do you recall my saying that, Mr. Mayor? Sure, but that's irrelevant to well, this matter. I will tell, and, you, I'll tell you why when you're finished. Well, I'm giving you an example of the two-step process, a two-step process which you yourself have adhered to. So it should come as no surprise that the county is saying, wait a minute, there is an ordinance on the book that you did not take the steps to remove in your original action to rezone this parcel. And the reason why no steps were taken were, was, as has been indicated by Mr. Drupler, that the town records did not contain that information. It's regrettable, but it's correctable. And in fact, Mr. Dufler and I took steps to commence the drafting of that. And you, you have not heard anything about that because in the aftermath of the transition, I spoke with the town chairman 
And I basically made inquiry. Should I be doing something about that? And his response was that that was something that w would not be pursued. And for that reason, I have not brought it to anyone's attention. Let's, let's back up for a minute, because you're <clears throat> all over the map on this. I full well understand that the county has jurisdictional authority over rezoning parcels of land in the town of Waukesha. I've known that for many, many, many years. So we understand the Five Diamonds thing is a two-step process. No disagreement about that at all. This is totally different, Attorney Delamore. The issue at hand here, and we can get it out and read the recommendation that ended up in Roger's report, but in so many words it said, tell Waukesha County to pound sand. That's what it said. It doesn't say this is a two-step process or whatever, and that's why their response is you cannot enlist or exercise village powers, even though you've had them since 1943, to basically take what is part of a provision in the zoning ordinance and say, we unilaterally take the opportunity to push this away. And that's what the recommendation said. That's the fundamental difference, and that's the issue that is at hand here. It's just that simple. Mr. Fisher, you have been in court more than most attorneys who practice law in this county. I, I am sure because of that you're familiar with the phrase, document speaks for itself. Anyone can read that. I respectfully disagree. Your characterization of the content is inaccurate, unreasonable, and unfair. And the reason why I'm saying that is that if your interpretation were a correct one, Jason Burt would not have recommended to the town planner that the town prepare an ordinance to basically rescind the ordinance that was not known about at the time that the rezoning for this particular parcel took place. That's essentially what took place. I think that perhaps and in fairness to you, perhaps you are interpreting the situation because you were not there to observe all of the frames in the film as to what took place. You, a moment ago, indicated that you weren't at the meeting when the action took place. So I think that it's reasonable for us to give you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, as to why there is confusion. It's irrelevant because this issue was not the issue in place at the meeting on the 14th of February. Yes, what, no, let me just finish. Let me finish. Okay. Go ahead. What would basically, and, and, and I'm obsessed after I guess, what am I misrepresenting? This letter, you and I can uh, disagree and say the letter speaks for itself, but when they write in there and basically says the town's use of village powers does not eliminate the responsibility of the town to enforce the terms of adopted ordinances, nor does it eliminate the need for zoning ordinance amendments to be approved by Waukesha County Board. We cannot take the position to tell them to get lost, and that's what the recommendation did in that um, report that we were presented. With at the meeting on Thursday, April 12th. It's no, just that simple. Yeah, no, that, 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 the, the report basically said, and I understood Mr. Dupont's report, town board members, you can pass an ordinance to rezone this property so as to allow this kind of a retail business. The report did not at all address the existence of a separate restricting ordinance that prohibited drive through restaurants there. What Mr. Firth is simply saying is, folks, uh, until you take action to basically rescind or amend that prior ordinance, you have to enforce the restriction 
against drive-through restaurants. And in his conversation, as I understood it with Mr. Dupler, he suggested that the town draft an ordinance to erase that restriction that nobody at the meeting that you weren't in attendance at had any awareness of. That's simply what happened. It, it can't be any simpler than that. We, we can agree, we're getting closer to turning war. We can agree that the ordinance could be changed. You and I can agree on that, and everybody should be able to in Waukesha County, that the ordinance could be changed. What they were rejecting is the fact that the town said we can ignore the provision of the ordinance. That's the issue. No, no, that's, that's not what I'm just, I pulled up your report. Yeah. There's two things that Jason writes about. The first one is, in your report, you write, information brought forth at the meeting has been determined to be overridden by subsequent ordinance revisions. Enrolled Ordinance 159-28, blah, 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 from June 2004, expressly prohibited restaurants with drive through lanes. However, Enrolled Ordinance, listing the number, from September of 2004, declares that the county parks and land use defers future approvals to the Town Planning Commission. In addition, it is the opinion of staff, I'm assuming that that means you, that Roger, it is the opinion, I mean, who, when you say staff in your reports, is it just you or is it, who's staff? Typically myself, uh, when I share information with um, uh, Donald Kirby and or the chairman if they're involved in the conversation. Okay. So where are you reading from? I'm reading from his report. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that the town has the ability to exercise village powers in such matters. That's a factual statement. We do have the ability to exercise village powers in these matters. It doesn't own matters. In this well, the ones we're talking about, yes, we have the ability to exercise village power. We could, in fact, change the zoning and send it to the county and have them approve it. They could deny it and send it back to us, but we have the ability to do that. And that's what this sentence says. And then he goes on, therefore, the appropriate action would be to notify the county of our action with a resolution as provided by Attorney De Lamora, which I think goes on to say, my interpretation of that statement is that if the town were to have passed and changed the zoning, that we could have then and would have needed to submit that to the county, and they would have to approve that. Now, the second paragraph doesn't have anything to do with the information contained in the first paragraph where Jason writes up, we are now in receipt of the report that I just read from April 5th for Dunkin' Donuts. The report states that subsequent ordinance revisions override the prohibition of drive-throughs. This is an incorrect statement. The revision only resulted in the amendment of two specific conditions, A and F, and did not alter the condition paragraph G of Exhibit A, which contains the prohibition of the drive-throughs. So when you cited the revision, my mind says, I've got a piece of paper right here, and I can go, geez, it did this, it did that, but it didn't undo the drive-through. So we, we should be seeing in this report the recommendation that we should have been changing the zoning way back then. And that doesn't fall to DeLamora. It doesn't fall to the Planning Commission or the Board. We're looking at our expert, our planner, to say, if you want to have the Dunkin' Donuts with the drive through which is a policy decision of the town, you will need to do the following things. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We don't have that. We have a document from our planner essentially telling us that the drive through prohibition has been overridden by an ordinance, the April 5th. And that's not true. Right. What the important part is this, and we can talk about who takes ownership of that and let Roger back into the conversation, but the last two sentences on the Town of Waukesha zoning report in April 5th, 2013 says, it is the opinion of staff, and we talked about that in my 
understanding is, unless somebody tells me differently, that this came from Attorney De La Mora, that the town has the ability to exercise village powers in such matters. Therefore, the appropriate action will be to notify, notify the county of our action with a declarative letter as provided by Attorney De La Mora. Supervisor Pro Fisher's um, simple translation of that is Waukesha County Pound Sand. That's what that says. Well, that's a stretch, I think. I believe we should end this badgering of Hector from Fisher and start to really smell and get old, in my opinion. Jim, did you get all of that? I want to encourage Needless to say, it's the second meeting now. Fisher just chooses to pick apart Hector. My guess is, I hope everybody's listening, my guess is there's an undertow here to get Mr. Hector to quit. Quite honestly, he doesn't come here. I wouldn't go any place to get badgered, all right? And my guess is there's an attorney in the wings that will step forward to the choosing of Fisher. So I wanted to share those thoughts. Thank you. Roger, what is, uh, rather than guess about what our interpretation of that final paragraph in your staff report was, what does it mean? What I understood it, what I understood it to mean when I, when I drafted that was that the town does have the ability to make uh, the requested changes to this site and actually take action to change the zoning. And you make that recommendation then to county. And where did you get that understanding from? from and, Wait, you like said recommendation. I just want to clarify. You said recommend make the recommendation to the county, as in to cause them to take action, right? Just like when a planning commission makes a recommendation to us, we would be making that same kind of recommendation to them. To Correct. Take with uh, with the support with uh, Mr. Uh, Delamora's letter or resolution. <clears throat> okay. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, clarify some information that, that uh, Mr. Bansky has shared with you. In regards to the timing and in regards to CSLs, we have not violated uh, the, the town ordinance nor state statute in processing of any CSMs. The one in question was the Danner CSM submitted on January 16th, thereby initiating a 60-day process that would have required action by March 17th. Mr. Danner's surveyor provided to the town on March 8th a letter of extension, knowing that that time frame for review was about to expire. Um, had he not produced that letter, we had the opportunity to put it on the agenda and deny it. We elected not to do that because we had the letter of extension. That letter, but if there was any flaw in this system, it's the lack of institutional knowledge in that the attorney and myself and the clerk, none of us understood that it's the town of Waukesha's policy, not ordinance, that the board has to take action or prefers to take action on letters of extension. That letter of extension was submitted before the deadline. It was filed before the deadline, and by all practical purposes, that CSM was suspended. Didn't need to have actual board action to accept the extension. Mr. Chairman, can I, um, a couple of other things that I guess I would like to cover and ask Mr. Dupler here, a couple of questions from my understanding. You raised the issue of his uh, professional performance. One topical uh, area is you basically have been our planner for a little over a year, if I'm not mistaken. And originally, and I don't know whether this was your suggestion or somebody's on behalf of the town, but you were providing weekly update reports to the town board on matters that you were dealing with, if you recall that. Yes. I found that a, a very useful, informative, and communication tool. Um, in about um, August, give or take, may have been July or August, um, I did have, well, let me ask a question first of all. Did you provide those electronically or in paper form, or how were those transmitted to the town? Uh, I, I transmitted everything electronically directly to Jamie. Electronically, okay. 
and um, my recollection, other members on the board, Supervisor Lask or Supervisor Bansky, we typically did not get those electronically, but typically got paper copies of those that were, I think typically, and Jamie might confirm that, distributed at staff uh, meetings or that type of thing. And I specifically recall it was either a closed session or staff meeting that Jamie had your weekly uh, update report to distribute to the uh, members of the board and she was about to do that and former chairwoman Van Sock basically uh, directed her not to release those because she had not had an opportunity to review them so they were not distributed at that time my question um, to you is and basically we ceased getting those weekly reports at that point in time can you offer any insight as to why uh, for about three months we were getting weekly planning reports and after that we weren't did you decide to suspend that or did somebody direct you not to do it or what happened so, um, those planning reports were initiated uh, the request was initiated by uh, chairperson Ben Zock um, it was in essentially to keep the board updated with any petitions that were coming in to the office any uh, requests for consideration so that you knew what was going on behind the scenes before it actually showed up on the agenda it was my understanding that those were being prepared for at that time what were weekly staff meetings and I believe the necessity for those ended when the weekly staff meetings ended. Um, okay. That information is still documented with every petition and every every resident or developer that I meet with here during office hours and it's kept by the clerk. Okay, thank you. Um, one other area that I would like to in Inquire about and, and Mr. Bansky, your supervisor Bansky, raised the issue about five diamonds and Tom uh, Kellenick uh, disputing bills and everything. I have uh, previously expressed in these uh, forums and these meetings my concern about uh, the entire issue of the issuance of occupancy permits and temporary occupancy permits uh, for the five diamonds project. And I want to uh, lay a couple of things out and I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you to be uh, thoughtful, candid, and forthcoming in your response on that as you possibly can be. And that would simply be this mine. I don't have the exact dates. I didn't write them down, but there was an initial temporary occupancy permit that was, I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but issued by uh, Tom DeLacy on behalf of independent inspections on behalf of the town of Waukesha, I think, in April of 2000. 12, I want to say, and then um, that, I don't remember the exact duration of time on that, but that expired in July, um, at which time a temporary occupancy permit was issued, and I know your hands were involved and your fingerprints on that temporary occupancy permit. I expressed concern at that point in time because it added additional conditions to that temporary occupancy permit, and I thought that that was inappropriate, and I thought it was an abuse of authority by the town board here, and I think I stated that in so many words. I believe I also um, questioned you or called you on the carpet, if you will, for your authority to do that. I ask you specifically, I think sitting across the table here, as to who had the authority to do that uh, in terms of the ordinance of the town of Waukesha, and I think you're response at that point in time is the town planner and the town building inspector words to that effect. Um, I didn't challenge that at that point in time, but I will tell you, uh, if you go through our ordinances, I believe it is abundantly clear that that authority and responsibility um, is allocated to the building inspector. We've had the discussion, the word town planner doesn't even exist, I don't think, in our town ordinances. I have raised that issue repeatedly. And it's a concern to me because then there was, what, one additional, at least one additional temporary occupancy permit, two more that were issued. So we have done that multiple times. I've been in the building and site design and construction business for going on close to 40 years. Never in my professional practice have I seen any community do that type of thing where somebody crosses the goal line and they keep moving the goal line back. This is an issue of concern for me and the supervisor last time, I'm not intending to pick one attorney De La Mora, but I'm very concerned that you have been silent on that issue. My question to you is can you explain to us here candidly and forthrightly 
that process that dragged out for almost over a year, the last of which I think was about dead bushes, why you ended up extending those temporary occupancy permits? Was that solely your decision, or were you getting some kind of guidance or direction from someone else? I, I was, need a candid answer. I would, I would ask the chairman, we are dangerously on the border of a open meetings violation. Five Diamonds is not a topic of discussion. The process by which a temporary occupancy permit is issued or should be issued, whether or not the town planner is defined within our ordinances when we know it's not, is not relevant to the topic as listed on. And, and the chairman was very harsh with me in placing this item on the agenda. I was provided requests from staff here at Town Hall that I must have specificity and clarity in the item to be placed on the agenda, and we are pretty far afield, pun intended, for the five times. I agree, but I disagree. You brought up the question of his integrity and, and uh, his I did product. not bring up his integrity as a question. I'm not making a judgment on or he even raising a concern or any hint of that. I was saying that we have had deficient reports. We've had, and I've heard on multiple occasions, staff in the clerk's office raise issues. Uh, I have a, a resident that I had breakfast with on Monday, and I don't think it's any secret that Everett and I didn't always get along here. Um, and we had breakfast, and he voiced some of the concerns that he and David had through the process. I have had General Capital chew on my ear about their concerns, and I think based on that body of evidence, clerk staff, residents, constituents, developers, this and that's why I wanted it on the agenda and I, I think it's for me I want to give the clerk somebody that they prefer to work with um, and move forward. Fair enough recognition? Uh, fair, fair enough. Um, what reports do you have of deficiency in his work? You see you have reports of his deficiency? I just read you one. Right there. No that's that's not his deficiency. Sure. I just read it from here. Your writing Hector doesn't determine that there was a an ordinance revision. <clears throat> That's the planner, and it's in the planner's report. It's not in the attorney's report. the words, Joe. Information brought. I'm not talking about the village powers, John. Information brought forth at the meeting has been determined to be overridden by subsequent ordinance revisions. That's your work, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. And the enrolled ordinance clearly states exactly that. The difference in interpretation coming from Jason Fruth takes a different standpoint and interprets it differently. Reviewing that information at staff level with both the chairperson and the attorney, um, it was pretty straightforward that uh, subsequent changes in that in old ordinance said that after 25% of the area was developed that the county was referring further action to the county. Mr. Chair, I have a whole okay. bunch of more questions. Let's just get let's get on with it. You had a question for Roger with yeah, regards to who you'd like to do that, and I would simply think quickly to rebut, but the, the question that you have brought to the fore, Joe, is Roger's professional performance. So in that regard, and you're even the one I took the note, you talked about Tom Kelnick's bills and everything. I think I'm entitled to ask him about his professional performance. And I guess I would like to ask you if you can shed some light on that process of issuing multiple temporary occupancy permits and changing the goal line every time they cross the goal line. I get an answer to that. I'd be glad to. Um, the temporary occupancy permits that were uh, required because uh, previous temporary occupancy permits issued by the building inspector were expiring. Uh, in, the, in the definition of items to be resolved by the building inspector, they concentrated on the building proper. They did not extend to the site 
or any of the conditional use elements that essentially regulate their operation. Um, Chairperson Van Zock and I were somewhat in a quandary because as the zoning administrator, use permits are issued by the zoning administrator, Five Diamonds was clearly in violation of their use permit, and the building inspector was not picking up or adding that information into his occupancy permit. The temporary occupancy permits were therefore issued as an attempt to combine both the building issues as well as the use issues that should have been part of the initial issuance of the building permit. So cut to the chase, you believe that that was an appropriate and proper procedure to follow? In many municipalities, that is an appropriate and proper procedure because the land use permits are indeed issued by zoning administrators. In the town of Waukesha's ordinance, I discovered after research later, that all, all of those duties are relegated to the building inspector. I, I, just a follow-up question. Who is the, in your eyes, who is the town of Waukesha's zoning administrator? Who is that? Uh, you're looking at him. Okay. It's identified uh, Thank you. on the town website. Uh, okay. Anything else? I would like to, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, just address um, some of Bansky's, some of Mr. Bansky's concerns about the uh, Eric German or David German proposal, uh, the CSM that uh, wouldn't go away. Uh, exercising my authority as zoning administrator in a very judicious and unbiased manner, I treated Mr. German as I would with any developer or petitioner or any other resident, giving them the best information I possibly could. Mr. German, nor his son, came into a plan staff meeting, sh uh, shared any of their intents other than just submitting the paperwork at the 11th hour uh, for three consecutive submits. The service that he received is a service that anyone would receive if they were that uncooperative in the system. I would say that David German would probably, and his wife Jessica, would leap from the back row to right next to you to dispute what you just said. No, they're not here, so let's not put words in anybody's mouth. Um, my point of view, we're going to be on our third planner in three years. Developments take a lot of time. We're going to be starting fresh with somebody again with no knowledge of the town, no knowledge of what's been happening in the town, no knowledge of the developments in the town. This has caused a great deal of confusion already. I think this is a very, very bad idea. Additionally, my understanding is both is more expensive. In a uh, time of budget cutting and watching our purse to be changing um, changing horses in the middle of a race is a bad, bad idea. I'd like to, I guess, offer a comment, and, and Hector, I'm going to invite you into this one. I'm not going to badger you or whatever, but do you have four H the Yankee Kobe letter of May 1st, and then the letter that Joe solicited from Fulton and Van Dyke. Do you have copies of those? May 1st? Yeah. May 1st, 2012? Exactly. And follow along, and I'll identify. And then the both uh, right. letter of June right. 11th? Yes, I do, sir. Follow along, and I'll outline this, and you tell me if I'm uh, misstepping. Um, this is a huge concern to me, Supervisor. Bansky and others, and you might want to follow along as well. If you look at the uh, letter from Yankee Colby of May, first it has an attachment comprised of two pages of what I'll call standard conditions, or it's called terms and conditions. Um, if you look on the second page, it's paragraph 2.04, termination. It includes both provisions in there for termination for cause and for convenience by the owner. And I'll let you catch up to speed with me on that, right. Do you agree? Do I agree that this language is in there? No, but it includes provisions both right. termination by cause and for convenience by the owner effective upon receiving the notice by YCA. Did I read yes, that correctly? That correct. Okay, so with where we're at tonight, and Joe, I don't know whether your motion is a question, I'll let you answer in a bit, whether you're motion contemplates that we are terminating for cause or convenience. I don't think 
from my perspective, you have made a plausible case that we're terminating for cause, but it certainly is the town's prerogative to terminate for convenience. So when I yield the floor, you can answer that question. Here's my deep concern about that. If you look at the Yagi Colby, uh, excuse me, the fourth and Van Dyke letter here, the fourth letter, that I guess, Joe, you what, took it upon yourself to solicit and have sent to Chairman Merrick. That also has a companion set of terms and conditions, which are the last two pages. And if you look at the fine print um, part of that, look at Section 3, General Provisions, 3.1.3. And I guess, Hector, I'll give you that's rather lengthy, a little bit of time to read that. My reading of that is if we were to enter into this agreement with them, we could not terminate merely for convenience. I don't think such a provision is in there. So I'd like to have you take the time to read that and tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe even as you're doing that, I'll let you get through and not interrupt you, but I'd like to even know whether you have read this agreement in its entirety. That's the first question. another issue in here under false terms and conditions 1.2.11 the third paragraph the owner shall also indemnify the planner against and hold the planner harmless from all claims damages and expenses including attorney's fees which are beyond the limits of li limits liability limits of the planner's professional liability insurance policy, including such claims, damages, and expenses which arise out of the act or omissions of the planner. So we're going to take responsibility for their screw-ups? That's what it says. <clears throat> I'll wait for Hedrick, which does not to... exist, by the way, in the Yigi Colby I don't. I don't know how we could possibly consider acting on an agreement that nobody has read, that we're no better than the people we send to Washington that vote on 2,500-page bills that they haven't even read. Hector, your answer, please. It does not appear that there is any uh, light provision in the full uh, standard terms and condition. And does that answer your yeah, would, Well, I guess go a step further. Would that not be an issue of concern? I mean, give us our legal Give us some legal advice here. You are the town's attorney. Isn't the town far better served with an agreement that allows the town to opt out for convenience and nothing more? We don't have to prove cause. In any situation, if you have a termination for convenience provision, it is always better than having to prove cause. Thank you. I know Fultz's letter also says here, um, Page two, and I'll just only read one sentence. If you have any questions <coughs> concerning our agreement for professional services, please feel free to contact us. I am sure that that means that if we did see question such as you point out, Brian, which protects the town, um, so that we could work with them to insert that language. and address some of the standard conditions of the agreement that are, are listed in here that you point out, that John's pointing out. So you want to hire these guys and then negotiate a contract with them?
that's an interesting description of it, and I, I will accept that process. Um, I, I think that those, the change of having the ability to terminate their contract out of convenience, I don't know that that would be um, something that would be a, a deal killer. Perhaps if you're, um, you know, I'd be interested to see what the other board members feel about perhaps bringing both in and we wanted to do that ahead of time, have them come in and sit down and look at those terms of that agreement. So wait a minute, maybe I misunderstood. You said you accept that process to hire them and then negotiate a contract? I don't personally feel that that we're cheating for presenting them with something that would be absolutely disagreeable to them based on the conversations I've had with them. But I think it would be prudent for us to have that language in the agreement and follow our attorney's advice. Which which part? The part about where they have no liability and we absorb all of their liability? We the can ask them to part. insert both, John. That'd be absolutely fine. Just like I just said, Brian, and then I said, and John, that referred to both comments that were made. And we should do that after we hire we could do it before, which is what I just said. I'd be interested to hear. I mean, maybe we got to play back the tape for you. You're not sharp enough for it, but I well, said. No, I'm pretty right sharp. Here. What you said was, I accept that process to hire them, and then negotiate a contract. And I said we can play it back. That if my board members would like to have him come in and sit down and work through that, I'd be happy to do it before or after we hire them. I would support either way, but that's me. Because I've had the conversations with them. You may or may not have. <clears throat> Mike, any input? I would feel comfortable bringing them sitting down with, well, bring them in, chat about positions or agreement. Is that hire two hire them. Fair enough, Larry. Same thing. So why don't we do change, do an amendment to his motion? I would accept the amendment to my motion to be to table this item to the following meeting in two weeks, have it back on the agenda, and to have both here to answer questions. So that is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion? Can, can we have that motion in writing, please? I don't know exactly what it is before. Yeah. Yeah. Favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 